Okay. Hello! So today is going to be a good one. It is going to be a Vex Viger game. This is the game where we talk about Viger. I'm sure you've seen it in all your lobbies. I'm sure you see lots of people forcing it. It is a very, very, very strong comp. Uh, only in, like, barring the most extreme circumstances do you ever bot forward with it. Uh, trust me, I've bot forward with it, and it's not pretty. But most of the time, you are just going to get the freest top two of your life. Um, as long as you're uncontested, right? Uh, and you get good items, because if you commit early and you don't get good items, you're kind of, you're kind of not going to do well. Uh, so what is Vex Viger? So basically, you're just playing around mages. Um, you're playing as many mages as you can fit in your board, uh, but it's basically just mages, right? Now, if you haven't seen this Vex Viger comp, uh, people are starting to get really, really good at it. People are starting to optimize it to, like, the absolute, like, crux of it being to the point where now, uh, I'm sure people are, like, crying that it needs to get nerfed. I used to play Vex and Viger back when... Um, like back from PBE because Vex was always like super duper strong from PBE. Uh, there's lots of games I'm sure some of you have seen on stream where I played on stream and I was playing Vex and Viger and there's lots of tech with Vex, especially in Orn Artifacts and Mages in Orn Artifacts, right? Uh, Viger, you can use a lot of Orn items on him, right? Deathfire Grasp is okay on Viger. Um, and then Vex, because she makes a health shield, she's kind of like the Tom Kench of the set in a way. That three cost uh, makes a huge health shield. So she's really good with like Forbidden Idol, Innervating Locket, as well as all the other generic frontline items. Viger, Zhonya. So a lot of times when it's Artifact Anvil, I used to just force but force Vex and Viger. Uh, back when Syndra was still meta and it was really good to play around. Now, if you haven't seen the comp, uh, I'm going to fit it into the team planner right now. There's a couple of different variations, and I'm going to tab, actually I'll just tab out and show it to you in a lot of a cleaner way. Also, if you like my content, make sure to like and subscribe, because I am, you know, trying my best to keep the daily uploads. I'm also trying my best to rank up. If you stop by stream and I'm super tilted, uh, you know, it's just because I'm stuck, hard stuck in Emerald right now. Uh, I, I feel like every single game, no matter what I do... It's just so miserable. Uh, I just like, like I just hate it. Uh, every time I play a reroll, I'm contested or I don't hit if I'm uncontested. I feel like the only games I go first or I win are when I gig a high roll, and that just makes the game really unfun to me. I don't know if it's the patch. I don't know if it's me. I don't know what's wrong, and I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm frustrated. But anyways, uh, let's go to the actual uh, little tutorial aspect. I just want to give that because like you know I feel bad if people stop by the stream. I'm super angry. It's only for that split second. Like even between games. I de-tilt, like, in the middle of the game. I only tilt, like, at the end of the game when it goes bad. Um, but anyways, it's fine. Uh, basically the comp. Uh, if you look at the mages, I'll plug in all the mage units. So the way mage works, uh, mage was always going to be broken, by the way. Uh, I'll read out what mage does. Mage makes it so you cast your ability twice. So it's basically like a 50% damage increase, more or less, or, like, even more than that. Um, and a lot of times you're usually playing around 3 mage, uh, or 5 mage. In rare occasions you play 7 mage, you can hit 7 mage by playing all the mage units as such, but then you don't really have a front line. So usually, you'll play an extra vanguard with the Vex and the Viger, which often is going to be a... Um, I'll show you different renditions. So the previous version, always you want to drop these two shitters, right? The one cost Seraphine and the Soraka. They don't really do anything. Even if you 3 star them, it doesn't really matter. A lot of times you're going to put Yumi on Viger and you're going to play these 5 mages. Now, if you're re-rolling for a 3 cost, which is Viger, and a 3 cost, which is Vex, a lot of times you're going to roll on level 7, because that's the best odds for you to have for a 3 cost. And then if you're rolling on level 7, you are going to fit in another Vanguard, which is usually Mordekaiser. And then you have a plus 1 spot that you can fit in anybody else, either an Eldritch unit, a Portal unit, a Chrono unit, a Honeymancy, whatever. Uh, the previous version of this board, you would play like this. Um, you would play with a... Uh, this was the version that I played in PBE, which was that you played uh, Nunu and Blitzcrank. And then what you would do is you would level, once you hit everybody, uh, for Taric. And then you would get in Portal, and you would play this board. And hopefully along the way, eventually you'll find a Nora. Until you have Nora and Nami, you keep in the other two shitters, right? The, the one cost, the one cost mages, these ones. You keep them in until you hit... Um, the other ones because basically uh, three mage or five mage and three mage basically they just reduce your total ability power such that um, when you do your double casting you, you don't do as much damage obviously seven mage is really tempting I wouldn't play it if you had a it, unless you have a spat now the hyper optimized way that everybody's playing it nowadays is fuck honey man see because that doesn't do anything what you do is you just play around Zareth 
Now, why do you play around Xerath? So Xerath's Arcana ability is that for every three charms that you buy, you do bonus true damage. Okay, that's cool. What is Viger's ability? Well, for every charm that you buy, he gains three ability power. So what are you going to do? You are going to be trying to play around... Um basically like building this vex viger board and buying charms every round so every single round you should be rolling for a charm as much as you can without griefing your econ too much such that by the end of the game you have a bunch of charms bought and then what you're going to do is you're going to try and find a tom kench eventually and pivot into this board uh this board is fittable on seven so even if you don't like giga hyrule sorry my music stopped let me just put it back to the start of the playlist shuffle there we go uh if you don't hit them early enough you'll basically just try and play around it in a different way now it um like you'll play around your other units until you hit the Zareth and you get into this spot uh once you hit vex three viger three you can push levels to try and find them with better odds but you're rolling for a charm every single round uh viger's best items i think he's pretty flexible with the last item but i think you always want blue buff you always want blue buff shoujin uh blue buff nashers if you have to make shoujin on viger it's still playable it's just not that good uh so you want to try and get that the last item is pretty flexible uh, I've seen JG do well. I've seen Rabadons do well. Just for sake of argument, I'm going to say that it's Rabadons. I think Rabadons, it's a little bit harder to hit. You have to really high roll to hit Rabadons, but I do think it's a little bit better. I'm trying to find where Rabadons is. Uh, Rabadons. Uh, Vex usually wants Spark. And I think Crown Guard is one of her best items. Uh, this was back in PB last time I looked at specifically Vex items. So I should double check it. And then like plus one, but you just want really good tank items. Uh, usually Spark is always essential on Vex. And your board looks something like this. Um, if you have the ability to itemize Nami, you just put Utility on Nami as per usual. But this is your board. Uh, this is basically your board. And then Xerath and Viker are going to scale off the charms you buy. So just buy a bunch of charms the whole time. If you're in a spot where you can play around charms really easily, like if it's like Cast Fest Portal, you might want to force mages. Stuff like that are all really nice. Um, also, for those of you that are making me feel self-conscious about myself, I'm gonna say something here. Where is it? Viger, League of Legends champion. Vigar. 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 People are telling me it's Vagar. Vigar. It's Vigar. I say Vigar. Maybe Vigar. I should say the Gar a little bit better. Right? I had somebody say that I say Arcana wrong as well. Arcana? Arcana. Like I'm getting fucking like 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 what? Like is like is it is it Nasus or Nasus? Nasus. Okay, it's Nasus. That one I say wrong. Okay, you got me there. Okay, you got me there, you got me there, everybody. Okay, that one's on me. Okay, but the other ones are the other ones I was saying right. Okay, if you want me to say Gar instead of Gur, I get it. But I think people were more upset that I said Vi instead of They. But it's Vi. Anyways, three one after Krugs. Uh, we have really good items. Things worked out really well. So I have blue buff Nashers. I have this extra bow. Maybe I reforge it. Maybe I don't. If you get a sword, this comp kind of feels like Syndra last set. If you if you get a sword, you're kind of fucked. So, you know, you have to try and play something else. Exiles also is one of the best silver augments in the game. You should almost always take it. There's never really a spot unless you have like support items or something like that where you need to force your units to stick together. You should almost always take Exiles. It's just really, really good. Uh, but as you can see here, I'm just playing 3 Mage and Chrono. I'm playing around this Vex and this Viger that I got early. And I'm upgrading the Viger to Viger 2 uh, with, show which, uh, with Nashers and Blue Buff. Pretty easy. Uh, like I said... If you have empty space in your board, fitting in a Chrono is really nice. It gives healing to your whole board. It also gives a little bit of AP to the Vex. Vex scales her shield off AP, so it's really nice to give her some extra sauce there. Uh, but yeah, this is a very smooth sailing game. We already have Viger 2, so we don't even have to worry about um, like rolling to stabilize on level 6. We might slight roll a little bit, maybe for a charm. Uh, then we're looking here. So um, I'm... Like there's Pandora's. I don't. I don't. I don't like Pandora's as a trait as a thing. I usually miss with Pandora's. Uh, I would have liked a combat, but because it's silver, this is like the best value I can probably hit. So I'm gonna level to six. I'm gonna roll until I hit a charm, I think. But I might roll just to fill this with three costs. Pandora's is really good for this comp. Oh, a forge and a remover. Perfect. Uh, we love that because then we can reforge this bow if we really need to. 
Yeah, I'm just rolling till around 30. I didn't have to roll this deep because I bought the first charm. But rolling extra means I'm just going to see a charm instantly next turn. Uh, I'm trying to figure out like a board I can play that's like the strongest as possible. Uh, I put an extra frontline unit in instead of the chrono unit. I feel like that's going to be a better value. And then if I hit something, I can just swap the Wukong onto the Pandora's. Now with Pandora's, usually you'll roll, upgrade some of the units, and then you'll roll two star versions because it's a little bit easier. It makes it really easy to hit your units. I wouldn't recommend playing Pandora's unless you're playing a one cost reroll. I think Pandora's is really shit most of the time unless you're playing a one cost reroll. The part of Pandora's that's really good though is if you are playing a comp, the other situation where Pandora's is good is not for two cost reels, it's not for three cost reels. The, the part where Pandora's is really good is if you are playing a comp where you spike really hard off of a particular five cost. Because finding a copy of a five cost on level seven or level eight isn't very hard. But finding the exact 5 cost that you need is nearly impossible. There are some times where you'll go all the way to level 9 and you will not find a 5 cost that you need. So for example, you're looking for Morgana. You can roll 50 gold on level 9 and not see a single Morgana. That's not even that's not even bad average. That's like average. That's like 60% luck like that you see a Morgana. It's like if you actually run the numbers. It is not like that low roll to just miss entirely on level 9, level 8 looking for 5 costs. So Pandora's is really good when you really, really, really want a 5 cost. And with this comp, uh, remember the part that I showed you, like the board? There are actually two that we really want. We want both Nora as well as the Yumi. Also, is my screen crooked or am I going crazy? Because I feel like the screen is crooked. Let me know in the comments. Like, I don't know how to fix it, but I feel like it's, it's tilted. But maybe that's just my eyes that are, like, kooky because I don't sleep that much. Right? But anyways, we want Nora and we want Zareth. So Zareth is so important to this comp uh, in terms of making it like from that top like four to like a top one. That's how you make this comp absolutely immovably strong. Obviously, if you get a mage emblem or you get some other shit, yes, you can make it work differently. Like you can get a mage emblem and you can play nine mage. Obviously, like that's all I'm talking about. I'm talking in a realistic game. This is reproducible every single game. If you were playing Viger, all you have to do is try and find a Xerath, right? You can't just make a mage emblem appear, right? Like, obviously, if you get the augment for it and you get a mage emblem, then yes, you can play mage emblem and you can put mage emblem on Mordekaiser, right? Because then that removes the, the, removes the need. You can play, like, four Vanguard, seven mage on eight, the same board. Or, sorry, four, uh, four Vanguard, five mage on eight, same board, but you have a Mordekaiser three as well, right? Like, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, if you're just playing a game and you don't hit anything in particular... You can play around this. Now, uh, in terms of items here, I just took... I have to kill this bow. Uh, I put Shiv. Shiv isn't the greatest item to make, honestly. I think even red buff is probably better on Viger. Um, maybe I'm wrong. But I just put uh, I just put Shiv here because I'm just trying to play item economy. Right? I'm not very healthy. As you see, I'm 74 HP. Losing one or two rounds, I'm easily in the bot four. I need time to hit my units. That's the main thing. I need I need time. If I hit all my units, I'll be strong. Uh, Viger's like damage amp, like if I roll for charms every single turn, uh, I'm going to have enough AP that the last item isn't going to matter that much. It's mostly just like you don't want to be in dire straits, right? Like greeting, like I have zero rods and I have a bow. I'm not going to greed for Rabadons. I'm not going to greed for JG. I need to make Vex items, and I can't make Vex items with that bow. I can reforge the bow maybe and hit something else, or I can just make something that's utility, right? I can make a Shiv, which shreds the whole board. Uh, helps me. That helps me a lot, right? I need Shred. It ups my damage by a considerable amount. It reduces 30% of the magic resist. So, good idea there. That's what I'm trying to say. And then even though it's level 6, I know that you want to roll on level 7. I'm rolling on level 6 because I also have Pandora's. So even if I roll on 6 and I find other 3 costs that I can upgrade these units, it's pretty good. But I'm rolling every turn for a charm because I'm trying to scale my AP as much as possible. I'm in a decent spot here where I have a good amount of money and my board is relatively stable. But I still want to scale those. The, I want to scale the, the Viger as much as I can. And then I'm going to slow roll on 7. Uh, once I once once we pass neutrals so every turn that's why I'm rolling a little bit I'm rolling until I see a charm and then I stop after I buy the charm uh, It sometimes costs a little bit of gold. It's basically like you're spending like four or five gold per round But I'm kind of like there's different ways you can treat it if you are in a very very good spot where you know that you're gonna be level seven early um, it, 
then you don't have to necessarily do that. If you think that you're going to be stuck on level 7, I would suggest start scaling now. It's kind of like that. In this game, I think I'm going to be stuck on level 7. If I had, like, you know, an extra Viger and a couple extra uh, Vexes, and I was, like, really, really rich, I probably wouldn't be rolling every single round. I would then uh, decide to use that gold to push levels once I hit my units and then play, like, a variation where I have a lot of extra sauce on my board. Make sure that I'm at those higher levels so that I can find the Xerath and the Tom Kench a lot easier. But because I'm looking at my board, I know it's Scuttle Puddle, by the way. Uh, Scuttle Puddle just means it's going to be super high roll into late game, and I'm already kind of high rolling, so whatever, I'll take it. But I just want to make sure that, like I said, I want to make sure that I, I hit my units as well as possible here. And because I feel like I'm going to be stuck on level 8, I just want to I just want to chill. Now, here I can make Jewel Gauntlet, right? I could make Jewel Gauntlet. Remember I was saying Jewel Gauntlet's really good on Viger? No. We need frontline items. Don't throw the game by not making frontline items. Steadfast and Crown Guard are both really good on Vex. So here I'm going to pre-level 7. Um, and then I roll for one charm. So I get my belts. I get my charm to scale my Viger. I pre-level to 7 here. I'm not going to waste the gold to go level 7 this turn. Because I don't feel the need that I have to spend. Right, I'm 60 HP. I am the low. I am relatively low in the lobby in terms of HP. But a lot of people are very close to me in HP. Uh, next turn though, I'm going to send it. I'm going to roll until I hit at least Vex 2. And as you can see, Pandora's is very slow, right? Especially if you don't have two-star upgrades. That's why I wouldn't recommend... I don't think you take Pandora's to play a three-cost reroll. You don't take Pandora's to play a two-cost reroll even. You usually only take it for one-cost rerolls because one-cost are very, very easy to hit some upgrades that you can get them rolling, right? If you're playing like Zoe, Lilia, and then you would take Pandora's. Here, I just took it because it was a silver augment. I didn't have a better option. Uh, I didn't have, like, a good combat. Like, if I had Mentorship, for example, Mentorship is a way better combat. All my, I would have taken Mentorship instead of Pandora's. But here, the main reason I use it is because, obviously, it's good for later. Uh, we just Giga hit. We got Spellblade. One of the best augments in the game. Uh, very, very broken. Uh, usually, you see it played with Rise. But in this case, we'll just play it with, um, we'll just play it with Mages. It's fine. They cast a lot. Uh, we find an, uh... We find a, uh, what's her name? Nami, which is fine. So now we're five mages because we got to level seven. Uh, I found Vex 2. I'm upgrading some Mordekaisers, by the way. But I think I'm probably just going to roll away the Mordekaisers at one point. And then, like I said, on level seven, if you're not fitting in, like, an optimal board, you can just play, like, a plus one unit. Usually, you can play the variation with, uh, instead of playing this version, you basically drop this guy. And then you can play, uh, you can play Blitz plus Nunu. Like that other version I showed you, but it's just very low cap. I think like you you, do, you don't cap as high. So here my mid game, like this part of the game is a little bit weaker because obviously I have this empty spot that's just like a shitter unit trying to play for an extra synergy. Uh, but as you can see, I made the Mordekaiser two, not because I'm going for Mordekaiser three. I'm gonna swap out the Mordekaiser for Tom Kench. Uh, this is a very this is a little bit greedy, obviously. Um, if I was, how do I phrase it? In a less greedy world, you just go for Mordekaiser 3 and you call it a day. But because I want to max cap this game, I want to cap out as high as possible. I'm playing around um, the Arcana uh, with the uh, with the Tom Kench. It's maybe, uh, like, obviously this is a greedy game, but, you know, I've been playing super reserved and I've been missing really hard. So we're just going to try our best. Uh, once we get our units, we'll stabilize. Our items are decent, right? The only thing that's a little bit sus is Shiv, but it's good. Um, and then these are fine items here. These gloves is good. I can just put on a frontline unit. Uh, my health is a little bit low. We got, we got to hit soon. Uh, these are those spots where it's like, surely I hit, and then you don't hit, and then you go bot four. So, you know, there's a good chance that we just lose. But like I said, I'm playing this variation because this variation is for win out. A little bit more consistent is to play the Nunu and the Blitzcrank because then you would just have a little bit extra sauce with the Viger. Uh, it would be a stronger version of the board right now. Until I find Tom Kench and Xerath, this board is weaker than some of the other versions that I showed you. Keep that in mind. I am just playing for the win out. I have Pandora's. I'm rolling every turn. Uh, I already found a Nami. If I didn't find a Nami, I probably would roll a 4 cost for the Nami. I don't want to roll a 4 cost for the Tom Kench because I'd rather hit the 3 stars of these. That's why I'm rolling the, uh, the, three, the 3 costs. But as soon as I hit one of them, I'll start rolling a 4 cost and a 5 cost if I can. Uh, I'm very low pick here. Uh, we're taking Xerath for sure. 100% every day of the week. Xerath is one part of the puzzle piece that we need to cap out this board really high. If this guy doesn't take... Oh, I took Xerath. Oh well. 
It is what it is. Uh, I'm just gonna take Rod here. Um, Vex likes Rod tank items, so I'm down to just put items on her like that. But yeah, hopefully this is enjoyable so far. I hope you're having a great day. My day was miserable. I lost like 10 games in a row. I went from one game away from... I, I've been one game away from Diamond four times now. And every single time, I just bought four. And it's just like, I bought four, I bought four, I bought four, I bought four. And I feel like it's not even my fault. And I'm trying my hardest to like not make it happen. But it's just like, it's just so unreasonable. Anyways, as you see now, I'm rolling one of the five costs. We're looking for, um, we're looking for a Zareth. Right, as soon as I hit Zareth, I found the Tom Kench now. Uh, I'm rolling because, like... Uh, I shouldn't really roll. I'm rolling for a better charm. I think the first charm I had wasn't very viable, so I didn't buy it. Uh, I should, for, for sake of optimization, I should just put this on the Vex. Because then I can use the remover and fix up the... Uh, I can fix her items anyways if I don't get a Vex item. I should be stronger than a lot of people. Uh, this comp is very strong and it is very stable on two stars. Right? I am losing a couple fights, right? We saw we lost two fights, but... You have to understand, I am very strong. My Viger also gets stronger every single round. Viger is really good at single target damage. So you just need enough frontline to stall for Viger to go through the entire board. That's why Nami is really good. Nami helps stall. Uh, but Viger's single target is always good. He can't compete if people have like multi-target damage. And also, I was one off this and then I just ran him into Vex 3. Like, I, I hit the Vex 2 on the bench and then this guy turned into Vex. Perfect. We'll take it. Every day of the week. I should roll for a charm here. Uh, did I ever buy a charm? No, I didn't. I have to roll for a charm. Uh, now I'm one off of Viger. I should probably roll a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to sell this. I need the bench space anyways. Uh, I'm rolling because I'm one off Viger, so I'm rolling to like 20. I would have probably rolled to 10, right? Hitting the spike, I don't really care about waiting for Pandora's uh, because we'll just roll other stuff. But we have, look, we found our, we found our Xerath. We found our Tom Kench. Uh, I should have put in Tom. I should have put in Zareth already. I didn't put it in. By my my bad. Sorry. Uh, but after this turn, it's thankfully we weren't punished, right? Thankfully we weren't punished and we won this round. But if we didn't, if we didn't hit the Zareth, we would have. Um, sorry, if we didn't, if we if we didn't win this round, it was because I didn't play Zareth, and that would have been my mistake. But up in now, very chill game, very reroll, right? Just reroll, very classic. Um, I hit, I hit two Vigers in here and one Viger here. Like, come on. Like, like sometimes it's high roll, but isn't that a little bit too funny? Can we agree that that was really funny? I had, I was one off of Viger. I hit two Vigers and another one. Like, I hit three Vigers. It's like, I wish I had that, like, a couple rounds ago, but that, it's totally fine. We're happy. Pandora's got a lot of value this game. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but obviously, uh, if we had another five cost, we can roll into either Xerath or Nora. So we're down to keep rolling. Uh, but every turn now, we just don't greed. Uh, the idea that we have here... Also, so many fucking item anvils. What's the best item I can make for Vex now? i probably make Morello here. Right? Surely it's Morello. Um, I can also make better Viger item. Do I make a better Viger item? Nah, I think it's fine. Oh, I could make a better Viger item. Wait, I have a remover. Okay, yeah, I make I make Jewel Gauntlet now, I put Shiv on you, and then I put Adaptive Helm on you. No! Okay, well that was not good. Damn it, now I don't have a fucking- Now I don't have a Vex item! Oh, I fucked that! Okay, the blue buff is really good on Nami, don't get me wrong. But like, it's- it, that, that was just a bad decision. So I should have put Adaptive Helm on Vex because it's fine. Adaptive Helm's fine on her, right? It's not, it's not, maybe it's not her best item, but it's a good enough item. Now my three-star frontline is missing an item. Like, what the fuck? That was so bad. Also, now I'm probably going to highlight in a couple seconds the uh, Arcana. So that was a huge mistake. Basically, I shouldn't have gone for Nami item here. Uh, with the blue buff, I could have made a, uh, I could have made an Adaptive Helm for this unit, right? And I just didn't. So that's my bad. Uh, anyways, uh, let me just pause for a second. So now I level to 8, right? You see I'm level 8. I'm level 8. I'm going to pause for a second because I didn't talk about this in the uh, in the part of the guide of the video. What am I leveling for? Arcana. You just level for vertical Arcana. You max out this. 
You level for Arcana. That's it. So I leveled. I'm rolling for a charm. I'm on 8 odds because it will be a little bit better. I don't have any other 3 stars. This guy doesn't matter. This guy doesn't matter. This guy matters level 8. This guy matters level 8. This guy matters level 8. It's fine. So we just level to 8 after you hit your Vex and your Viker 3. You don't need to stay on 7 anymore. I level to 8. Even putting in 1 extra Arcana unit, you'll see the spike. It, it's such a huge spike in damage. Now we've been buying charms all day, right? We've been buying, for the entire game, we've been buying these items. Here I'm just rolling slightly. I'm trying to see if I can find a 5 cost. Uh, Exiles is really hard to position around when you have this many units. So I'm trying to find a way. I could move this guy up one and then free up a spot, but you know we found we found a way we found a way that works. Um, I hope that I hover Arcana. Do I hover it any time? I want to see how much true damage I'm doing, because basically with Zareth selected, you do additional true damage. So now my my Viger is not only hitting for like hitting like a fucking truck, my Viger is also fucking doing a bunch of true damage. Look at this shit. I'm doing like 30% bonus true damage because I've been buying so many charms. That's the thing. When you're playing Vi Viger and Vex, you're always rolling for charms. So it works, it synergizes really well as a reroll comp. But then the final puzzle piece is that Xerath just scales you off of charms as well. So you're double scaling off of this broken interaction. You're scaling your AP and then you're scaling true damage on top of it. It is busted. That's how you cap out this board. You will watch these fights. There's not a single person. I don't care how much fucking tankiness anybody has in this lobby. They are not winning a single fight anymore. I don't think they. I don't think I lose once unless I get cheesed. Like unless like a dives the backline or some shit that I have to watch out for. There is no way. Also, I, I'm not seeing a third vex. That makes me so sad. Look how sad this vex looks. It's it's back in set. It's back in set ten where we have emo vex. Like she's so sad without a third item, and that's my bad. But look at this guy. He's sitting like a truck. I bought this charm. Yeah, I bought a bunch of belts. Um, but every turn you just roll for charm now. Every turn you just roll for charm. Just scale up both of them. Uh, this guy scales every three charms. So, so it really adds up afterwards. Uh, there's a pyro emblem, which might be bad. Uh, but look at that. What's that, chat? What's that, chat? Or YouTube chat. Comment section. Nobody wants it. Isn't that crazy? I know they're both like, both these guys aren't playing towards Arcana. I got a free Arcana emblem. Now that's, that's a high roll. <laughs> Look at my true damage. I'm doing 20% true damage. And I'm not even, I'm, we're not even at stage six yet. Like I've just been buying charms all game and I'm only two, I'm only three Arcana, right? Like, like if you saw the rise video I made, also, how did I get an Ornn? Oh, I bought an Ornn artifact. Yeah, okay, whatever. Hull Crusher, Hull Crusher, Hull Crusher, Hull Crusher, Vex item. Hull Crusher, why am I looking at snipers? Yes, Hull Crusher, yes! Oh, that took me way too long. I think I was thinking about snipers this and I was debating if it was worth it or not. Holy shit, you wanna see somebody die real fast? Ready? Watch this. Look, these guys dive the back line. They're just going to get one shot. Look how much damage he's doing. He's hitting for like a thousand plus every single hit. Also, this game is kind of funny. Nami did more damage than my Viger. I think that's just because she did a bunch of true damage by stunning the whole board. So I just added up. That's so funny to me. Yeah, the true damage is insane. Uh, I'm looking around to see if anybody's holding. Right now, what I'm scouting for is I'm... Oh, also, this guy... Lightning dummy. Have you ever seen this? This is so funny. Also, I'm struggling to position around it. There we go. Found a spot right in the middle. Uh, having Xerath also gives you a chance of hitting these like really broken early game charm or these really broken uh, additional charms. So it works out really nice. I don't even know what I'm rolling here. I'm just kind of rolling for whatever. I guess I just roll for Nami 3, I think is my thought process. So I should roll the Olaf as well. Uh, I'm holding on to, uh, I'm holding on to, what's his name? Uh, Hecarim, because my next level up is going to be Hecarim. If I get a bunch of gold, right, it is Crab Rave. We can cap really high. We play the Hecarim, and we're good. Uh, but yeah, look at this. Uh, Vex is almost full HP, right? Viger, like, like, it's not even close. 
And this is, a lot of it's because of the capping out, right? The true damage makes it so it's kind of insane, the damage. Sometimes you run into spots. Here I have really good items as well. My items worked out really nicely. Add removers. There was that part where they just dropped a bunch of component anvils, so I have like triple people itemized. It's a very high roll game. Your Vex Viger games aren't always going to look like this, right? They're not. Uh, often they're going to look a lot worse than this. Uh, but this is what I mean. This is how you. This is playing for a first. If I didn't have good items, I didn't have uh, the best units. I would play maybe a different rendition, right? I would go for Mordekaiser three instead of going for this particular version. Uh, not because of like it being low cap and like whatever or reliable. Just by nature of like if I don't hit a Zareth ever, you know, Mordekaiser three is gonna get me a fourth a lot more often than a random Tom Kenj and plus one stupid unit that doesn't matter. Uh, part of the reason why this variation works so well is because I was Pandora's bench. And it is Scuttle Puddle, so I know I'm going to cap very high. There's not a reason when you're playing in Scuttle Puddle or Loot Sub, where there, there's a lot of variance in the game, uh, there's no reason for you to try and low roll. There's no reason for you to go for a consistent strategy. Because like if you play Loot Sub and you don't like gamble a little bit, you're, you're fucked anyways. Because everybody else is going to have some insane board, and you're reliable, consistent, easy peasy just play this and get out board isn't gonna do well in, in a in any situation as as bad as something like loot sub or scuttle puddle because everybody's just gonna hit some kind of crazy ass board and you're just gonna sit there what twiddling your thumbs the whole game so that's why i went for this variation i wouldn't recommend always going for it obviously like you know if you don't find a Zareth early enough uh, you don't stabilize your damage as well because your front line's a little bit more susceptible, especially if you don't have Mordekaiser 3, especially if you don't have Tom Kench 2, right? Uh, sometimes it's hard to even find a single Tom Kench on level 7. Uh, this game was pretty reliable because I had Pandora's. This is what I mean by a comp. This comp spikes really hard with 5 costs and 4 costs. Pandora's works out really well in this case because, you know, I might low roll Pandora's, but on average, you're going to find one copy of the four cost or one copy of the five cost in a relatively um in a relatively simple manner right in a very fast manner also it's crazy that that guy was playing arcana and didn't take an arcana spat i got i got the freest arcana spat uh i can just level this turn probably uh and just play the play the last dude i'm greeting i'm, I'm greeting really hard now i could have easily uh, leveled here. I might lose this fight because Katarina, Katarina sometimes just jumps on your Viger and then she just kills everything, right? Because if I lose my Viger, this Vex isn't really damage oriented, so she's not gonna. She might be hard to kill, but I think in overtime I'll lose the fight if I lose my Viger instantly. We also have really good augments. Spellblades under understated how broken it is. Uh, yeah, I don't see anybody beating me. I'm gonna cap so fucking high, because I still can level. I'm going straight to 9. I don't have a Nora yet, by the way. So, there's lots of things that I can hit that are gonna make me really strong. Hitting a Nora to get Yumi on the Viger ups my damage. Uh, look at my true damage. 50%! My Viger's hitting for 1,000 damage, and then he's gonna do another 500 true damage. He's hitting for 1,500, and 500 of his unscaled by any of their, like is unscaled by their armor slash magic resist. So he's doing more than that. Also, I'm going to be at 60 next turn. Because I've been buying charms all day. Look at this. Look at this. The white numbers are the true damage. That's unscaled. That's like, that's like you know, not taking into account. I'm doing 60% true damage. Put that into perspective. Isn't that fucking nutty? That's nuts. That's nuts. This is broken. It's actually broken. Also, I got an Arcana spat. How did I get an Arcana spat? How did they how did how did I get an Arcana spat this game? I don't even know. Like what the fuck? Why aren't all my games like this? I'd be down. I'd be down to not get the Arcana spat and go second this game if it meant I would go second in a couple other games today. Because I just go eighth half the time and then I have a game like this where I just get an Arcana spat. And it's like, is this just how you're supposed to play the game? You just always have to play the most optimal thing and just go for, like, the hard outs all the time? Anyways, I take Shiv. You know, never never too much shredding. Uh, I get the Nora. And, yeah. I'll, I'll damage amp on all my allies. Sure. Fuck it. Fuck it. 60% true damage. 60% this turn. Because I bought a charm. 
60% true damage. Who's going to last 60% true damage? Nobody. But a lot of it works because you're buying a lot of charms. A lot of times you cap out around Xerath, but you're usually only getting like 10-20% to 20 true damage. Here we're hitting so much because not only were we 5 Arcana, we've also been buying charms all game for this, uh, for this Viger. So we have such a good spot, right? Just, just dead. Just everybody's just dead. Just, just they're just fucking melting. They're just getting melted. Uh, buy a charm again, whatever, who knows. I don't even think somebody can scam me. Like, I'm looking, like, even if somebody, like, maybe a 3-star 4-cost wins, but I don't even know if they win. Because a 3-star 4-cost is going to take a while to chew through the Vex, even if they are 3-star 4-cost. So, like, there's a chance that, like, with that much true damage, you still win. Like, this is, like, a giga cap. Like, I think this is, I think this board, besides that one of the Rise games that I played, I don't know if I posted on YouTube, but one of them I did. But I've gotten a lot of Rise games where I have an Arcana plus 1, and I do a similar build. Right, because I've, I've played Rise games where I have, like, close to 50% true damage. Because I buy charms every single round. Right, so it's similar to some of those, but yeah, this is just ridiculous. One more fight, I guess, after after neutrals. I'm down, sure. Let's hit Nora 2, maybe. Oh, there we go. Pandora's into Nora 2. Uh, maybe we hit this 3. Who knows? I'm just rolling some 4 costs now. I'm double checking this board, right? Obviously, it's just like the uh, a high cap Ari board. Uh, Ari's broken. Ari was broken. She was not this strong. Trust me. Uh, but obviously, like, you know, a lot of this comes from hitting Xerath and hitting Arcana plus one. If I didn't have Arcana plus one, I'd still be doing like 40% true damage with this build. Uh, if I didn't level up, I'd be doing closer to like 20% true damage. Usually, like, if you're only like, if you're only Tom Kench and Xerath. It only scales to like 20% true damage, so if the game was a little bit less high roll, like uh, in a normal Scuttle Puddle game, then you know, it's fine. Uh, Ari upgrade, sure. Two more items, I'm down. Rabadon, Shoujin, let's just itemize this dude. Just wrap it up. GG. I wish I had more games like this. This was back when I was Emerald 1. I lost all my LP again. I'm, I'm Emerald 3. You know how depressing it is for me? I'm a Masters level player. And I know that I keep saying that, but it's just like, bro, like this patch feels so awkward. Like I have games like this where I just win, and I have games that I don't win. But anyways, that's how you play this comp. Or that's how you optimize it to like a better way. I don't know if I made a Vex Viger video already when I used to play it before. Maybe I didn't. But yeah. Uh, if you don't believe me that it's strong, it's strong, right? It's very, fu it's very strong. Uh, just, you know, make sure that you hold, make sure that if, even if, if you see a Xerath ever, hold on to the Xerath. It's underestimated how much better Tom Kench Xerath is in this type of comp. Uh, obviously you need to have a stable front line. You need to have everything stabilized, but it's, if you can cap out this high, uh, this is, this is ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, have fun. Um, enjoy. And of course, um, you know, have a great rest of your day and see ya.